Hey guys, it's Brian with Frostbite Off-Road. We're back in the garage today. If you checked out our last video, we went ahead and got our axle all put together. Today, we're gonna swap it into the Jeep. We've got a Rubicon Dana 44 that's trussed. We got it all together with some chromolys and some power stop brakes. Let's go ahead and get that old axle out. I'm gonna pull the Jeep in the garage and we'll throw this thing in there. All right guys, so we got the Jeep backed in. We're gonna go ahead and start ripping out the old axle. I'm gonna show you the new axle here real quick. So we've got the truss new axle with the power stop brakes. This is a Dana 44 rear, so it's got the E-locker. It's four tens as well, just like my front. I did re-gear on this one, and this one does have the limited slip, but it's in the narrow track width. So we're gonna swap that out for the Rubicon one. It's pretty easy guys. We're gonna pull drive shafts, control arms, uh, track bar shocks uh, and then the brakes where we got new brakes and we got new brake lines So that's gonna probably be the hardest part is getting all that together But this is pretty easy. Let's go ahead and unbolt the old one and we'll show you how to put the new one in Okay, we went ahead and got the frame up on jack stands there Got it up quite a bit here. So we got some room to work We're gonna go ahead and pull the tires off then we can start working on unbuttoning all the suspension All right, so real quick, we've got the wheels off, got the frame up on jack stands. We're gonna drop her down. I do need to go ahead and disconnect the shocks, the sway bar links, and then I'm also gonna loosen this bolt here and pull the brake lines free and that little breather hose there. That way we don't have any binding. Okay, we went ahead and loosened up our brake lines. We got our shock bolts out and we got our sway bar link up and out of the way. We did go ahead and loosen the track bar there and then we also disconnected the breather tube there. So we should be able to drop this axle down. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this all the way off and the control arms once we get her back on the ground. Another thing you wanna be careful of is your ABS lines there. We're gonna go ahead and pull those here in a second as well so we don't put too much stress. And then we're also gonna to have to get in there and disconnect our drive line there. So let's go ahead and we'll drop all this down, start getting stuff disconnected so we can slide in that new axle. I want to show you guys a little trick with the e-brake cables. If you go ahead and pull them up in the Jeep there, and then clamp these guys right here, and then let the e-brake off, you can go ahead and get that snaked out of there pretty easy. Then we'll go ahead and grab a half inch closed end. You slide it over that, and it'll pop that guy right out. So let's go ahead and do that on both sides here, and then we'll go ahead and work on getting the drive shaft unbuttoned. Okay, with that e-brake released, you can slide these guys right out. Go ahead and we'll slide that half inch on there and that should pop that guy out as well. That half inch works pretty great for that. So now we've got that totally disconnected on the driver's side. Let's do the passenger side. We're gonna start working on the control arms and then that drive shaft. We're gonna go ahead and put a jack stand right underneath the, the pinion here. So that way nothing rotates. We'll get that pulled out. We'll pull some coils. We'll drop this all the way down. And then we can start getting that new axle underneath there. Okay, so we went ahead and disconnected all the control arms here. Got all the brake lines off there, the e-brake lines. Got the drive shaft off there. So now all we gotta do is go ahead and hang the brake calipers up out of the way. And then this is ready to roll on out of here. These coils will just kind of fall right out once we get some uh, tension off these. Okay, we went ahead and pulled the brakes. We're gonna hang these up out of the way here in a second. And then we gotta pull that ABS line there. That's a little eight millimeter. We'll get that out of the way. We'll hang this guy up and then we should be able to slide the axle right out. All right, she's out. Let's go ahead and get the other one in there. All right, we got that old Dana 44 out of there. We're gonna have to swap a few things over. We are gonna have to swap over the spring isolators, our metal cloak, uh, bump stops for the rear. We're also gonna need these little brackets here. And then I do have the skids on the lower control arm mounts, so we're gonna swap those over. Another thing I'm gonna swap over is my cab fab diff cover. I've been happy with that, so we're gonna get that swapped over. Other than that, everything else will stay on this and we'll sell it besides the, the pinion. We're gonna go ahead and pull that pinion flange off and put it on our other one so it works with our Adams drive shaft there. So let's go ahead and we'll get everything swapped over. I'll show you what it looks like. 
on this axle and then we'll go ahead and slide this under the Jeep. Get that nut off, let's go ahead and pull the flange. Okay, so we went ahead and pulled our cab fab cover off this axle. We got our pinion flange off, so we'll go ahead and swap that over to the new Rubicon one there. We did go ahead and check the pinion uh, resistance with an inch pound torque wrench, so we'll go ahead and get that back, hopefully close to where it was at. We gotta pull a couple of the brackets off here and put, swap them over, but then we'll be ready to install that new one. We went ahead and swapped everything over from the old axle, got it onto the new one. We just need to put our lower control arm skids back on and then our pinion as well. So what we're going to do, is so we got the nut here, we're going to put some uh, black RTV on there. We're also going to put some on the splines. So when we put that new pinion on, we don't have any leaking here. As you saw, when we took this off, it leaked quite a bit. So we want to go ahead and we'll RTV this so no oil comes back out once we're installed. And then I'm also going to red lock tight this guy and we're going to get it tighten down and try to get to the same inch pounds of rotational force so this is nice and seated and then we should be all set all right so now we're going to go ahead and swap out the brakes for the grim brakes do need to go ahead and get in here and pop this clip off with a flathead right, right here we're going to pop that off with a flathead and this is where we're going to connect our new bracket nice thing about these grim ones they are dot and they do come with factory style brackets so we can put our abs lines back in the little holes there. So let's go ahead and get this off. We'll get this all hooked up and I'll show you what it looks like. All right guys, so we went ahead and got one side all buttoned up. Got our new Grim brake lines in there. You wanna get this tight, but you don't want it too tight so you don't strip it just so it's not leaking. We went ahead and zip tied those brake lines along there. Got everything torqued up here. So now we just need to uh, get the sway bar links back on. We'll throw that track bar back on. We gotta bleed these and then we should be all done. We're gonna do the same on the other side real quick, and then we'll wrap this on up. All right, go ahead and push. Let off. Let off. Let off. Okay guys, we went ahead and got everything bled. The new Grim brake lines are on, they're all set up. Works really good, got all the bubbles out of the system. We did use almost that whole small bottle of DOT3, so make sure you guys have that. All right, all we got left is the track bar and the sway bar end links. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, button those up and we'll get the wheels back on and then we should be all set. We'll go take her for a test drive. We are gonna go ahead and wire up the locker on a separate video. That one shouldn't take too long. We did buy the Mopar harness, so it should be pretty easy. All right. Let's go ahead and get her all buttoned up and we'll show you what the final product looks like. Alright guys, that's just going to about do it for the install of my Rubicon rear axle on my JL Sport here for you. So I think it turned out pretty good. One thing we did run into is when we were tightening that pinion nut, we did over tighten it a little bit. I went back, checked it with the inch pound torque wrench and it was a little too tight. So we called up my buddy Adam over at Prepped Overland. He suggested to bring it on in. So we threw the Jeep on a tow truck, had it towed on over there just to be safe so we weren't damaging anything. But while we were there, we decided to go ahead and re-gear anyways. So we went ahead and put in some Spicer 513s in the Jeep. Did a video on that. You guys can go ahead and check that out as well. Turned out great. We have been off-roading since and having the locker, the new brakes, and the 513s has been amazing on the trail. That video is coming soon. Guys, if you liked this video, go ahead, like, subscribe, so you don't miss any of those future videos, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this axle swap. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.